Hello, my name is Miranda H.P. And I'm Connor Calloway. And we are the Bountiful Bards. Please join us in our first ever recorded D&D campaign, The Fountains of Cathedra. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope we're all doing well today. Bold of you to assume it's morning. It could be evening for a lot of people. It could be nighttime. Guten Tag. Good earthly rotation to you all. Good day. Good day. We are back again to start on chapter six after that big kablooey of lore dump the last episode we have, which Miranda is still sort of reeling from. I know. I wrote music for it. It was so dramatic. Yeah. And for anybody wondering, she wrote that music after the recording and then I just added it back in post. And it was very nicely done. This was a squint. I added it back. Uh, I wrote it while listening to you. Who did the editing? Well, I did that part. No, I, okay, but I edit the rest of the oh, podcast okay. and then I added it to post. <laughs> I published it. It was me who did the last one. It was I. It was I. Well, look, it was just so dramatic when uh, you were saying it. The music was already creating itself in my head, so I had no choice. You had no choice. It's not a problem at all. Have a good day. Have a good, or else. Yes. Okay, well, if you are wanting to, Miranda, we can go ahead and dive right into our game, or is there anything else you'd like to talk about or bring up? No, um, I, we've got our, we are working on getting our YouTube channel up and running. Oh yeah, that's right. I am slowly uploading music to it, stymied by my need to create some kind of visual for the music just to have there as a placeholder. Um, that's really the only thing that's inhibiting more of my uploads Mm -hmm. because I'm a perfectionist and it's like, Oh, it's really boring to stare at nothing. Um, so, but working on it, have a lot of songs I have written and finished and either haven't had the time to upload or haven't had the guts because it's scary to put yourself out there for everyone to bully. Yeah, that is true. (laughs) It's not like we do that now, of course. Look, I'm used to you bullying me. It's we, fine. We may actually have reviews on some of the websites. I never go check because I'm always terrified of what they're going to say. Going to be yay or nay, you know, whichever. Yep. So, but that's all That's all I've got so far is just working on continuing to put music on there that either accompanies what we're doing or just stuff that I've done because, you know, I'm learning audition and other various music mixing devices. So a big part of that is me practicing. So... Withhold too much judgment, please. I'm learning. I'm teaching myself completely, so. <laughs> well, at least it's fun. It's a skill learning. Keeps the brain sharp and all that other good stuff. A lot of people don't realize, or a lot of people do, just how overwhelming um, these Adobe programs can be. And there's people out there that have mastered them, and they can just work wonders and dreams. And, you know, just the starting point is always like internal screaming, internal screaming. But eventually you start to move stones together i guess so just yeah. like with this i'm picking it up pretty quick it's it's been fun i just don't have a lot of time because i'm doing eight million things but um, never we have ne- we never have any time we need to just win the lottery and then we could just create content forever yes everything is content but yeah just putting it out there there's music out there working on lo-fi stuff working on background stuff so if there's anything out there that you hear that you like or there's something i've done that you want to hear more of just let me know because inevitably i may have already written something or i'm working on something like that folklore song you just came up with yes i wrote a folk song and that will be uploaded as well once i'm done with the mix you know once you get that done let's we should add it to the end of one of our episodes if anybody would like to listen to it you know just a little send off after the outro and everything a little bonus feature content second disc blu-ray type stuff how it was made so oh and that gives to another idea let's re-upload all of our episodes but we'll also have commentary about what we're doing you know we just have to be careful and not speak over ourselves from the past Uh, i'm I'm good i'm good and then after that's done we can go back and do commentary on our commentary of the podcast and just keep doing it Anyway, and I do hope just you all sound- enjoy our podcast today, and I hope you've brought your bread and cheese oh. as we join Leah and the omnipresent narrator for Fountains of Cathedra. This is my job. I'm supposed to do that. Chapter 6 When the sixth spoke, each syllable quaked the tower. 
The silence that followed stopped my heart. Then the horizon grew crimson, and then everything changed. The Journal of Rake. Leah. Yep. You have had quite a doozy of a day, or two days. It's been a doozy of a decade, yep. Not, a, not only did you find the ruins, parentheses, of... Quotation marks. Quotation marks. God, <laughs> more coffee. The ruins, quotation marks, of Radian, the tower city that once was. You saw that everything was pristine and as if frozen in time. And after gallivanting through all the more important buildings and find some rather useful stuff like a wonderful magical you know spectral piano that you can use as a spell focus and arcane focus absolutely you also eventually found after a quick tussle with a animated uh, machine a key to the centroid elevator essentially of the what am i trying to say the city district then you fought a giant mechanical spider. Yeah, it's always enormous spiders. With a laser beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, you touched a little bitty beam of light and you got the answer to the question of who is calling out to you in your dreams. Which just so happened to be a goddess that explained to you, in very brief terms I'll say here, A, she did not make this world but was dragged here and destroyed it in doing so. She was pulled here by individuals known as the Sixth, who dabbled with magics they did not know uh, what they were doing, basically went too far, and the original creator of this world perished long before the people began to build while defending his creation from a celestial beast known as a conclusion. And the calcified remains, fossilized remains of it are currently floating in your atmosphere as giant rocks. That's a lot. Yep. But then, your... Mentor, Prime Regis Thiel, and your brother, Jimothy, both came through the teleportation circle like you did, were quite baffled with what they seen. You saw them from a distance, they saw you, and you both met together between some of the beautiful yet vacant buildings. Because we had been separated, and I don't know how long I was uh, in that other place. You were probably in there for over about 30 hours, if not because you had a long rest mm -hmm. at one point. I would say you were there for at least 24 hours, a full day. Yeah. So I'm sure they were not exactly happy about it. <laughs> so running up to you, we'll get into it. It was like, Leah, oh my goodness, you look like you've had a rather rough time. What happened? Let me explain. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. <laughs> sum up what? I'll sum it up. Sorry, that was a Princess Bride reference. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course, I missed it. I do apologize. There's so much going on in my head right now. It's where Indigo Montoya, he's like, what happened? He's like, let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. So you tell them everything? Yes. Okay. They, at first, have looks of confusion on their face as you begin to tell them what happened. They move from that to somewhat of a sense of awe and then both their expressions begin to deviate where you see your mentor prime regis Thiel, begins to grow more and more excited as you are saying these things and then when you look over at jimothy you see that his expression is growing concern and maybe even somewhat doubtful as you describe everything that just happened and that you experienced from the goddess from the giant spider from the giant rocks from you know you have to save the world before it gets destroyed. That whole thing came up. That's pretty heavy to carry. So for at least a good five to ten seconds after you finish regaling your tale, they are silent. I pull out my spectral piano and play a sick jazz riff to help convince Jimothy. Thiel's the first one to speak. And she says, uh, this, uh, this, this confir confirms so much. So much. Do you do you realize that, Leah? Do you realize if 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 this goddess, this origin is is is, is telling the truth, uh, we have the answers to the questions that have plagued the Solarium and those within, both public and secret, since its creation. Where the curtains in the sky came from? Why the advancement of magic is stalled for your mother and I, and now along with you two, fountains. And. and and then how the world was destroyed. 
the, the scriptures that they, they they state that the god spoke to Adder. You know, your world is your world is breaking, and she kind of puffs herself up, kind of all cleric like, and it it cannot be saved. You you must be re- rebuilt. This life I can grant you. This rebirth is your responsibility. Don't waste this gift. Protect it with your understanding. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to write all this down. This theory is coming to f- uh, fruition. Uh, this, is, this place is amazing. But, but, but nothing is in ruin. We, Everything seems to be preserved. We probably need to think through what our reactions are to this. Because sure, I, I agree with you. But something I've kind of figured out from my hours and hours of shelving books and getting bored and reading several of them is... A lot of times when you prove an aspect of someone's belief system true, instead of them being happy about it, a lot of times they get pretty upset about it. So I feel like we have to be careful here. I'm not saying we just, you know, begin telling everyone in the world. Of course we can't do that. They wouldn't swallow. They wouldn't take that. That'd be crazy. No, but it's for us to know and for us to have a goal. Yeah, no, I agree. I think these fountains are important. Um, Jimothy, how you doing, bud? Uh, I don't know if we should trust the civilian or not. The the goddess, I don't know. Um, uh, do you are you, are you two forgetting who's in charge? Like the church? No, that's that's why I just said what I said. Yeah, I get that. I just the, who gives the church their power? The clerics are. I, we've seen what the clerics can do. Um, I've seen I've seen what they can do in the city. When I was in Etchings, they are far more powerful than apparently we're capable of being with this limit that's on us. I, who's giving them power? Is this goddess giving them power? Is this because from the scriptures, apparently according to your story, you know that's who put them on the lake of Miro. Did she stop? Why is she asking you? And she has this whole church that she gives power to. Like that that's a question I have. Does that make any sense? Am I am I making does this sound stupid? I I'm sorry, I'm not good at articulating my thoughts or my feelings here. I just that was something I had. It sounds dumb, doesn't it? No. I mean I, I understand your questions. I really do. Um and I would normally be just as cynical alongside you, but there's just there's something and I, and I've never felt this before, Jimothy. You know, we were raised in the church environment and there were people all the time who talked about feeling the pull and feeling the call, even dad, as you know, mom, maybe less so, but she, you know, but I never felt it. I never felt any kind of pull or draw. And with this, I do. And I realize now that I've been feeling it for a long time and the pull has just been getting stronger and stronger. And I suppose it almost feels like like an ache. Like you forgot to eat. I know, try to wrap your mind around that. Yeah, that doesn't happen to me. But then you forget that you forgot to eat and you don't know why you don't feel right. And then and then you eat something and all of a sudden you remember that you were hungry. That's what it feels like. And I wouldn't normally Trust to feeling, but there is there's something about this that I want to explore. Well, these are all fine points, says Theo. Uh, but for now, all I am hearing is that uh, we can increase our magical power. And not to sound too eager or selfish, but um, I'd have to say I'm, I'm willing to find these fountains for that alone. Oh yeah, no, no, that too. Pretty cool with that. Yep. Yep, yep. The saving the world thing is really just an afterthought when you compare to that. It's just, I, it's very fascinating. I'm sorry, like I said, I'm. It's hard to kill my buzz right now, not, not when I've, I have so many questions that are answered. So questions, questions that need answering. <laughs> so um, uh, where, 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 which we, where should we go first? I, I, I would say not etchings, cause uh, woo, that's a hot bit of coals at the moment. So, uh, what, Jimothy, Leah, what, what, what do you think we should go first? I was thinking Miro, actually. Oh? Why? Well, I, we know the city really well. We've, we've established connections and contacts there, and 
I think if there's a place that we could return to and be careful and unnoticed and even maybe get a little bit of help from people who might not know why they're helping us, that's our best place to start. And because we have to get a bunch of different places from a bunch of cities that we may or may not be familiar with, we might as well cut our teeth on one that we do know. Jimothy scratches his chin a little bit. Is that some peach fuzz, Jimothy? I don't want to talk about it. Look, I'm sorry I have to be the pragmatic one here. It's just, we, that was scary what happened in Etchings, and it's just, Miro is, I mean, a month's right away. Like, how are, how are we going to get there with no supplies? No horse? Wagons? We don't have anything. And by now, the whole Lance is, has our face and name. Well, So the civilized road is pretty much going to be off limits and I mean do you think it best we just trot through what once was and all this dangers on foot to be honest I think that'd be pretty cool but huh we are in a place that teleports us what what goes without saying that maybe it can teleport us closer to Miro we don't know we haven't really explored yet we haven't ah. seen Theo wags her finger. She has a very smug, smug grin as she begins to talk. Uh, yeah, it would be a fine mess. To, uh, but I've been doing a lot of learning. And since you were stuck in here, I did some panic reading, which is probably the best way to ever solve a problem is when it's under pressure. Um, so you're, uh, Leah, you're actually absolutely right. I have found out a way to adjust those teleportation circles. I poked Timothy at- like right at the point where it goes... <clears throat> <laughs> So according to the manuals, Mm. the whole country was once scattered with all these little way stations. I guess they were out in villages and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure there's probably a way station where we found all those slats, you know, where they had the telescope and they were looking at all the curtains. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was one buried somewhere there. I, I found out that you can adjust the destination. And we could probably find one closer to Miro if I look over all the logs. Only the countryside, mind you. Nothing about radian uh, adju- uh, adjustments except for the one that came through here. So I can't send us to any other ruins if there are any. But outside of radian, and that's probably because of, you know, th- now that I'm thinking about it, you probably couldn't adjust the traffic into the tower because of, you know, traffic of people and stuff like that. And there was probably, oh God, can you imagine how fascinating that would be? Just the networking that they did and the messaging yep, that they uh-huh, had to send. Anyway. Look, anyways, yeah. But I can probably adjust the way station to anywhere outside of radian proper. Uh, this circle back here that brought us here, this is a one-way ticket. There's no way we can come back and forth. Well, so, then I would think it would be best for us to be outside of Miro, which is not Radian. Right. Different. Of, yes, of course it's different. So um, I think, and then Jimothy's like, wait, 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 wait. Look, look, I'm, 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 I'm not the smartest one in the batch here, obviously. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just the guy, I'm the guy, I don't know what I am. But uh, does anybody else recall the boulder of rubble? Sitting on the other circles back in the station. Well, Jimothy, luckily for you, and I, I slap him on the back, you know what you are to us? You're the beefcake. Yeah, I don't want to teleport into a rock. That's not what I meant. It's not, we have it's not like the safest things. thing. I don't want to like just appear and then just be a rock person. That's not what I'm about. We um, can always try to send something through that's not us and see what happens. Actually, it's very astute, Jim. I thought of that too. And I found that in the manual, the portals have a safety protocol for that. The portals are apparently completely safe uh, before the inscriptions are designed to not function and work if the circle on the other side is blocked or broken. The inscriptions actually send a pulse before you. I think it's like a, it's like a faint representation of a person. And if it arrives and is destroyed, then the failsafe is activated and no one is sent across. There is one downside, though. We only know of the one-way station with a working power source. Ours. It puts out enough power to activate the portal on the other side. But if we want to return to our little camp and there is no power source on the other side, we're stranded. So, my suggestion is that I remain at the station so that when you're ready to return home, I, you can just send me a message and I can activate the portal and it'll bring you across. That way I can continue reading all the manuals and seeing what else I can find. What do you think? That sounds like a pretty reasonable plan. Um, You know, it's 
it's a thing too where normally they would say safety in numbers, but I think the fewer of us that are on the road and and I think we can blend relatively well, uh, especially if Jimothy, you kind of hunch a little bit, look slightly less, you know, mm-hmm. muscular. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Thiel, there's not a whole lot we can do with you because you are, you know, you. So I think both in the 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 whole trying to be discreet thing and also in the practical, we have to be able to get back. I think that kind of works out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Great start. Great start. But what about the whole, you know, find a definitive, highly secured, dried up spring of magical material and somehow get the juices pumping again? Do you have any idea where to even start to find this thing? No, but see, here's the thing. We're good at finding stuff that we're not supposed to find. Okay. I feel like this fountain is going to be highly secured. And probably underneath the church there. Maybe. Maybe not. We don't know. And if there's anything that you and I know, it's how to get in places we're not supposed to be, especially churches. We've spent pretty much our entire life sneaking out of churches and into them to get into things that we weren't supposed to. And you forget, we do technically have a friend on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, I know we were going to probably reach out to our uncle. I. That's not who I meant. Oh, who? Crap, I forgot his name. Are you talking about your cleric friend? Yeah. That's okay. Check your notes. I am. I am checking my notes. Uh, This note checking is brought to you by Seasons, Carol of the Bells. Pick up your copy on Amazon today. I don't think I transferred all of my notes notes over over yet. So you'll just have to remind me. Uh, Carmine? Cleric Carmine? Correct. I know it sounded red. Yeah, so Cleric Carmine. That's, That's who I was thinking of. It sounded red. Yeah, uh, the the red color, carmine, red carmine, carbine, something like that. There's a red color that's used in food that sounds like that. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, let me see if I can remember what it's called. No, I believe you for sure. Now I need to look it up just to make sure we do have his name right. You know how many worlds I have to build? I got uh, no a whole another homebrew campaign I'm running with for my friends in a completely different world. <laughs> Carmine, yeah, I was right. Carmine, number three. It's, I don't think it, I think it's just uh, the thing that makes things red. Jimothy continues, of course. I, well, I guess we can ask him, but do you think he would know about these fountains? I feel like this would be like, no offense to our good friend, but, you know, high ranking stuff. I wasn't thinking about asking him directly, hey, do you know where these super secret secure fountains are that they definitely want guarded because they're a source of something that the church doesn't want getting out because it undermines their authority? I was not thinking about going that route. I was more like thinking that should we have specific questions relating to layouts of churches and stuff? Because if there's one thing we know is that people tend to build things the same way each time because it is easier to have one blueprint. Mm. So there may be certain things that are consistent or the same, or there may be ways that like, maybe he did like, you know, a cleric version of an internship at the different ones. So there may be things that he could tell us that are useful without us telling him exactly why. And I don't think he will give us as much pushback as you think, because he definitely, he wants to learn more. He's really intrigued, but he also wants that plausible deniability. And he knows that if we don't tell him everything, we're keeping him safe. But he also still gets to feel like he's participating. So I kind of think he'd be down for that more than you'd think. Okay. So let Carmine know what's going on. See what he can find. But he's in etchings. Yeah. And we're going to go to Miro. So are we going to stop by Uncle Larga's? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I was just thinking Carmine could also help us be a misdirect. Is there anybody else in Miro that we know that could help? That would be willing to help? Well, we have the... Didn't we start the guild there and stuff? Yeah, but I mean, we can't, we can't trust those people. I don't um, think it's more about trusting people. It's about being able to get the patterns of the town. You know what would be a cool idea? We could reach out to Raysar, our little dragon friend. Ooh. Maybe he knows some things. Or, Jimothy, like, gets, he actually brightens up a little bit at this. You know, he was saying his mom knew a lot. Yeah. So... Maybe we could go to a dragon. They said they lived in the mountains north of the lake. Sounds like a plan. Look at you coming up with these ideas. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good job. Jimothy has it figured out for us. The old not to worry. The old goes, oh, I'm not worried uh, in the slightest. It's a darn accent. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I start slipping when I get excited. Uh, all right. 
So let's, uh, Leah, did you do a, all the spelunking in this area? Is there anything else that we need to take part in or should we just go back to the way station? Is there anything in there or is it all just like... You pretty much flipped the whole district looking for everything. Oh, that's not what I meant. I meant like, I thought you meant like when we came back, so... Oh, no, you're currently standing in oh, Radiant yeah, yeah. right now. You're currently standing in the district. Y'all haven't gone back to the way station okay. yet. Yeah, nope. Um, Scrub the place. Okay. Oh, we'll there have might plenty be of time more scary that automaton, so we should probably I do what? not. Let's end. Let's go. Oh, okay. All right. And then, so you want to go back to the way station? Yeah, I just kind of like shove it through. <laughs> All right. So the three of you head back to the way station, and thankfully you do find that the portal works. Because there is a... There's probably been a few moments of fear where they're like, oh, yeah, how do we get back if we don't have the power? But apparently Radian at least has enough juice to send, or at least this district or Radian somewhere, maybe underneath the platform is a giant magical generator of energy that shoots you both back to the safety of your way station where all you have all your friendly automatons and your little sparkly friends waiting for you. Well, I mean, they've been storing that energy for a while and haven't had to use it. So I bet it's finally like, oh, thank God. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Even if it's a few, just uh, something. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we have a plan and it just takes probably a few days for her to figure out how to adjust the portal. And, you know, doesn't scramble you both together while you go across, you know, Cronenborg style. Oh, lovely. So we'll and I'm sure Leah, like, unpacked and repacked her bags and stuff, especially now that she's got her spectral keys. She wants to make sure everything is that she needs to use is within the correct reach. And also, you know, goofs off with Jemothy showing him how it works and all that good stuff yeah. just to kind of show it off. It's cool. It's a new toy. Absolutely not a problem. And he does the chopsticks on it a few times. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So just to calm everything back down. You go back to the way station where you spend probably the next day um, helping Theo pour over the books and try and figure out um, exactly what needs to be adjusted and also where this, where another teleportation circle or way station could be. She actually pulls out a manual that opens up and it's one of those uh, like old atlases that you just pull out 20 foldings that are all in one book and you're never going to fold it back the correct way when you put it in there. You're going to end up ruining the parchment, but she does and you actually see an old style map of Cathedra and there are pinpoints, little bit of pinpoints all over it showing where way stations are. It's covered with the Cathedra version of sticky notes, just like... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Scrawlings. There's little cat prints as well from where a cat probably walked over it, too, because that's she's, in all the old She's scriptures. got one of the old school like compasses. You yeah, know, exactly. To... Yeah. Trying to triangulate exactly where it to be. Um, and while they're doing that, Jimothy goes. Uh, so you think so we're going to ask the dragon for help? Maybe they might be interested. I'd like I want to kind of see the dragon again. Yeah, me too. I think it'd be cool. Um, How are we going to figure out where they are? Well, I think that, let's see, I can send a message to them today, since we're going to leave tomorrow, just send a message and say, hey, we're going to be doing some interesting shenanigans. You in? Uh, and then see if they want to, if, if we can meet them somewhere so they can give us like a particular location and like. I mean, once Theo has kind of triangulated the vague area where we'll be, almost there, she says, as she's like <laughs> hunched over the with so with a, a you know with a light in her hand, a magic light she created in her hand, just kind of looking over everything, <laughs> muttering to herself in her original language, just like <laughs> oh, absolutely, muttering in Dwarvish. You, you every now and then you hear <laughs> yeah, just like ah, Kazad. Timothy's like, all right, you know this is pretty. If we can get this working, we can get all over this country before they know where we are. Yeah, I know. Like cockroaches. That's what you get. Cockroach. All right. Well, do you want to send a message to uh, Rosser? After Thiel has told us that I don't need the exact area, just like enough of an area to where if I tell a dragon, hey, we're going to be popping up in this area. It's not like 100 square miles. Ah, OK. So about another hour and a half to two hours pass. Um, you know, the robots are coming up and handing you a plate of very nice stew like apples and meats and just delicate as spices and uh with then he wanders back to his kitchen to continue other stuff we found an ancient ping pong table and are playing what we think is ping pong <laughs> you probably, yeah um i mean jimothy would probably be also in his spare time would be you know going through his sword forms and stuff like that while you're playing uh i i found it i have it 
I, and she brings in the map and it looks like it's been torn a little bit. She goes here and she points and you can actually see where the lake is and everything on the map. And uh, she has scribbled in in fresh ink, Miro, uh, where the city is. She goes, uh, this one is 30 miles outside the city. That's about as close as we can get you. I okay. can get you. Who's we? Oh, yeah. Yes. She was helping. Good job, Claire. Says a little sparky ball as she goes to fly off. Uh, Well, all right. I guess give send a message to your dragon friend or okay. dragon friend. Okay. So I, I pull out the mystical piano and just a couple arpeggios just to kind of call. As you do that, like Phil that. and Jimothy both go wide eyed stare and they're like, what is that? I showed it to them. Oh, Remember, we went through the whole thing where I played a cool, sick jazz riff on there. Cause like, oh, okay. Well, my apologies. I didn't miss no. that. I thought, you were, I thought you were doing the whole, you know, being funny, not really canon thing. I do apologize. Oh, did you want me to have been funny? I was like, because well, Jimothy didn't look like he believed me. So I was like. <laughs> so you thought playing a quick dra- jazz riff would help him believe you? Well, if I have the thing that he didn't believe I had out in front of him playing a quick jazz riff, it's it's pretty hard to ignore sick jazz riffs. I'm just saying. Yeah, this jazz is chaos. Yes. All right, go ahead. Okay. You so, can send your message. Um, Pronounce his name for me one more time. Oh, his name is uh, Rossair. Rossair. The Mountain's Light. Ross- you probably don't have to add that part. Sair. 25 words. I'll get the gun. I get the fingers up. Okay. Oh, man. It's 25 words. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, so I'll send the message. Okay. Going to be 30 miles outside Miro for shenanigans. Would you like to be in cahoots? Would like to see you again. Hugs and kisses, Lee and Jimothy. Rar. <laughs> <laughs> there you may reply to this message. <laughs> about 30 seconds before you hear, uh, Leah, shenanigans? Not sure. Would love to see you. Where meet? My mom wants to meet you. Okay. And is sending something that goes on, it says unlimited range, and yeah, it's one it's round. One round, so you only, one spell, six seconds, 25 words, basically. Oh, that's all you get? Well, nobody's ever going to use message inside combat, so yeah, you only you get 25 words. So you'd have to burn another spell slot to send another. Okay, well, I've got two slots, so I'll, sp- I'll burn my last slot before we go to our long rest to send him another one. Okay. Um, well, I already said 30 miles outside Miro. When I, that was part of it. Oh, that was part of it. So. Like, I don't mind burning another one to like confirm, but I just wanted to let them know that's like the Go vague. ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So like, like I said, you're going to be able to, you know, get a long rest regardless. So it's not going to hurt you. Well, I know. I'm just saying. So like, is there a spot that I know 30 miles outside Miro? Because we know that area pretty well. Is there a spot that I would know that would be like, you know, like I'm thinking like having to land a Cessna in a field kind of thing. <laughs> like True. Um, It's going to be north. East of the lake, I would say. So you're going to be northeast of the city because the city's on the southern side of the lake. Is there latitude and longitude on this map that Phil has? There are. It's all in triangles, actually. Oh God, they didn't. They weren't even coordinated enough to do that long. No, no wonder their civilization died. Phil goes. I don't know how. I would suggest you ask the sweet dragon to meet you by the lake, and you two are just going to have to walk there. Okay, so I'll send back the message and basically just convey that we're going to be. By the lake on the northeast side? Yeah. And go from there. Um, First thing in the morning, right as the sun's coming up. It's a 30-mile hike, so probably afternoon. This is your I'm, DM. Okay. Movie. Yeah, yeah. So Can you're, you you're going to be Can you please convey to me what's happening? Because I thought we were meeting the dragon because we were going to pop up right, but outside by the lake. and 30 miles outside of Miro. Right, but why would we meet a dragon inside the city? It's not going to be inside the city. It's a huge, like, I'm thinking, not Great Lake, but definitely, you know, if you're on one side of the lake, you're probably not going to be able to see the city on the other side. That's how big right. the lake is. But if we're meeting the dragon, we wouldn't want to meet them anywhere near the city. So wouldn't you're they? You're not going to be near the city. You're going to be northeast of the lake, which isn't near the city. So, but we have to get to the lake is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. You'd have to walk a little, probably. 
Okay, how far do we have to walk? I'm confused. I thought we were going to pop up next to the lake. No, 30 miles outside the city. So that's is where we pop up. Yeah, which and then is going to be probably is... in some woods or something. Okay, so we're going to pop up in the woods. And how far from the woods to, is it to the lake? 25 miles. A day's worth of walking. Oh, okay. So I guess I will. So I'll just send back that we'll see them in two days because if it takes us an entire day to get there. Why can't they meet us in the forest where we pop out then if we're going to pop out? Because how are you going to tell that dragon where you are in a giant forest? That's the question there. There's, there's no, no landmarks. No landmarks at all. I mean, there's mountains behind you. There's forest before you. Um, essentially, all there is. That's why I suggested the lake because the lake's easy to find. Man, if the you're world by the was lake really shore. uncoordinated before GPS. Absolutely. People dealt with this all the time. They had lat long, though, damn it. They had lat long. Not everybody knew how to do lat long, especially not no young dragon. And then they died. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so in two days' time, early morning at the lake, northeast part of the lake, closest to whatever the name of that forest is. Because I'm sure we know what the name of the forest is. Right, no. Um, you hear a response back that, uh, okay. I'll fly and I'll find you. Weather looks good up here. You should be good. I should find you. I should. I think. See you then. And that's the end of it. Okay. You pooping? Are you pooping? Okay. Um. So, because, well, yeah, we're, we're in for a trek. Yes, of course. So, everything, the plan is set. Find the dragon. Go meet his mom? That's going to be fun. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review anywhere you've found us. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Bountiful Bards. We hope to see you again on the civilized road. And bring bread and cheese. As the story goes, until then. <laughs>